Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Vanita. We will be talking today about the transits in January, from the beginning of January until end of January, of Venus and Mercury. How will they influence the 12th signs, the 12th ascendants? So just to remind you, until 20th of January, Mercury will be in Sagittarius together with Saturn, and until end of the month, Venus will be in Scorpio together with Jupiter. So these are very interesting and very, there is so much to say about these transits. Please start, Vanita. This is interesting. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Krasi, for having me over again. And uh, of course, transits always bring a lot of changes, you know, uh, maybe smaller on the smaller scale or on a bigger scale, but they do, they do impact us. We know Venus is also, uh, it's a, it's a, Teacher of demons, it's a planet of love, pleasure. So it is joining the uh, teacher of gods, that is Jupiter, which is hope, wisdom, happiness. We all know that. So now, when th these are joining in the deep sign of uh, Scorpio, so it is definitely going to be more of a transformational change uh, in our uh, maybe you know emotions in our uh, sexual desires or maybe something to do with dreams so this is going to bring a lot of uh, krasi it's going to be really uh, uh, a key to healing i would say transformation and then it is going to be a healing phase for others it's it's really uh, i feel um, for all the ascendants if you are covering it will not impact the similar way, obviously. It is as per uh, uh, the position of your natal Venus also, how it is, and of course, how your Mercury in the chart is will depend a lot on the positions. So, uh, uh, Krasi, are we going to take up um, uh, one by one each sign? Let's like say, let, yeah, of course, let's, say, let's okay. start with, uh, with, first, if you like, Vanita, we can make just a very quick overview. And for me, it's yeah. also important to say that the eclipse, which is going to, which happened now in, uh, on the 5th and the 6th of January, mm -hmm. happened on the axis where Saturn and Mercury together invisible are. And just to okay. say, before we start, I will hand it to you to start with sign by sign, just that Saturn and Mercury together and combust completely invisible hidden in the rays of the sun is an indication that there will be lack of truth lack of true media the mainstream media is what we are not supposed to trust maybe right. there will right. be issues with contracts depends of course how your Mercury how your Saturn are placed in your natal chart how this how where this axis of Sagittarius um, Gemini is on your natal yeah. chart so this all depends but certainly on mundane level this will have impact very bad impact on the markets they will be slow to slow down enormously but also on truth on signing contracts on doing new beginnings which are related to trade on this we need to be very careful at least until uh end of end of january basically i think vanita yes yes because uh, the eclipse is also uh, you know there uh, the lunar eclipse which is happening on the 21st so that is happening in the sign of capricorn and in the axis of capricorn cancer axis so again it is going to be a very yeah. uh, impactful eclipse it's the uh, the first eclipse was a partial one which was a solar <coughs> partial solar eclipse so, but this eclipse, which is coming uh, in the month or by the end of this month is going to impact yeah. us all uh, in a very strong manner. And of course, uh, you rightly said Mercury, as we know, it's going to be in Sagittarius till the 20th of uh, January. So Sagittarius is a sign of society at large. It is, it is uh, uh, the sign of adventure. It is with mercury being there it's like you know with saturn and uh, uh, of course in the sign of jupiter so you know the armchair philosophers and religious fanatics might come yeah. out of they will, they will be taking over yeah so that's something that we have to pay attention more uh, to what others are saying you know we, we must not uh, just we should just hear everything but you know we should not follow what the others are saying so that is the time oh, when we exactly have very yeah. careful it like like the truth and the lies and uh, are being emphasized uh, enormously yeah, yeah you're right yes 
so it is it is a very good uh, time when saturn and mercury actually co join so if i take aries you know aries people this is be happening the venus transit and jupiter transit in your 8th house and uh, saturn and mercury will be transiting your 9th house so definitely your religious discussion political dog fight all those things might just come up so you have to look inside look internally transform yourself you have to be logical because uh, whatever said in none uh, jupiter and venus in the 8th house is a trans it's a key to healing it's a key to success actually uh, to understand people more to understand relationships more so this is a right time to um, uh, not to get traumatized by the outside uh, scenarios around you you can socialize you can be uh, receptive to what the others are saying but don't fall prey to what the others are actually trying to you know maybe uh, they will try to uh, overpower you so that you have to work on during this phase and of course with the eclipse coming up you have to take care of your uh, work uh, environment also at workplace this can be a very difficult time for you so you have to be really careful at a at home and at the workplace both can get impacted krasi to all for you now yes taurus um yes so taurus yes taurus will be very much influenced because taurus of course is is uh, ruled by venus and this is a beautiful period when venus and jupiter are together on the descendant of the taurus rising uh, people so this is this will be beautiful this will give them uh just good feeling in general this can be very good for their relationships for their contracts well mercury is not very fine but still this will bring some plus in terms of people they meet in terms of their personal life um saturn and mercury are in their eighth house so again this can make them very in, very deep into the esoterics secret sciences uh, so I see it as a not a bad uh, period for uh, for Taurus in particular, and their feelings and their emotions can go to a very very deep uh, level of even of extremes. But this will be blessful period for them. Well, let's go ahead if you like with uh, uh, with the Gemini. All right, sure. So for Gemini, this is a. Uh... A uh, little tough phase they are already going through because uh, Rahu is transiting the North Node is transiting their second house. So they have been very rude. They have been very strict. They have been very uh, discomforting to others, especially your family members. So you have to be very careful with that, especially with the Saturn and uh, Mercury in your uh, transiting your. A zone of uh, the marital bliss so it is not uh, advisable to fall into any kind of argument jupiter and venus of course in the sixth house will be like you will be more cautious about your uh, health you will be uh, for your daily uh, habits you will be more cautious towards those things so you want to actually spend more time in the at the workplace you should have cordiality maintained with your colleagues with your bosses that is uh, going to help you enhance your uh, career prospects i would say it's good that you know if you are uh, you just uh, be a little concerned about your weight gain because this is the time when you know when jupiter transiting your sixth house is of course not a good idea you know to eat outside or to spend a lot of time on uh, uh, laziness and not doing any activity so it's not good it's not advisable so you can enjoy but um, with the daily routine but still at the same time look for uh, look look that uh, you know you don't have any major health issues so that will help you in fact so with um, saturn being uh, a very contractive planet it wants your discipline to be maintained with mercury coming there so you have to have uh, your investments to have to be checked your social circle has to be uh, checked at, the, at during this uh, transit of mercury and saturn together in your 7th so i think it's overall a very good transit for you because 6th house transits are not considered bad and 7th house transits are also considered good in a way 
So over to you, Krasi, for cancer. Yes, cancer. Now, Jupiter and Venus is in the fifth house for the cancer sign. And this is very nice because the fifth house is the house of the good fortune. It's a, it's a lucky period in terms of studies, in terms of all pleasurous deeds that you may desire, that you will have desired to do. It will be good for your love life. And it will be very good for the studies, those creative studies that do not require diploma. Now, the sixth house is where of cancer rising is where Saturn and Mercury invisible are. These can impact your colleagues, your subordinates. Be careful with them. Don't trust them. Don't even share your plans, your secrets with them. And be a bit responsible for your own health and for the health of your family members. But basically, uh, the trine aspect, which come, the good harmonious trine aspect, which comes from Jupiter and Venus, will be saving you. But still, be responsible for your health and give a lot of time for studies and pleasure. Why not? So, Leo's. <laughs> when it yeah. So for Leo, this is uh, going to be um, a transit which is happening in your fifth house. Mercury is transiting fifth and. Uh, from it uh, itself, the 12th house is the uh, uh, Scorpio sign where Venus is transiting. So it is definitely going to be a transitional period at the workplace. You know, you feel very comfortable sitting and relaxing at home. This is the time you will feel that, you know, I must not go out anywhere. But yes, it's not the right thing to do. You have, uh, you can, rather than if you're think, uh, thinking of any renovation or something, this is the right time to go ahead with that. Because if you are sitting in the house, so that will be like lazing around as well as, you know, redecorating your house as well. So it's a comfortable area. You can do so. And, uh, uh, but be watchful over your children because, you know, your relationship with your children should not go down. Uh, Mercury and Saturn, when they are together, you know, they bring a lot of changes in your, Mercury is a child, basically, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a childlike uh, scenario here around you. So uh, Saturn is a matured one. So Saturn wants, uh, of course, uh, contraction in a particular area of uh, your creativity basically will get enhanced. So you can utilize this transit as your creative self is hidden inside you. So just bring that out. Just bring that out. Make the, use, make the best use of it. Have cordiality maintained with your children. Keep a check on them. If you're planning to send them somewhere abroad, this is the right time. If you're planning to, this is the right time. You can lay the foundation till the 20th. It's a good phase to decide something, but not to take any decision, of course, because of the uh, eclipses which are happening. So, uh, of course, um, uh, with Venus and Jupiter in the fourth house, I come back to that again, because this is... Um, you know, land and houses are the symbols of our inner world. All right. It's a very important transit for you. Why? Because you have to, it's a good time to put down roots and find place where you belong and where you can grow, actually. So when both the gurus, you know, as we say, demons and gods, gurus, they come together, what they do? They want the best of you to come out, actually. Whatever said and done, even if they are not uh, friendly to each other, but they want, yeah, you have, this is the time to lay foundation to a better home, better world around you. So make the best use of this because um, it is uh, definitely uh, going to be a very good phase for the future uh, if you lay a foundation now. That's what I say about Leo's uh, over Very nice. Very nice, yes. Virgo. Now, Jupiter and Venus are ruling around right now on your, on your third house. And this is very supportive in terms of, again, studies, spiritual work, trade. Uh, so this is, this is quite supportive and will give you good feeling, indeed, when you de denote time for studies. This can be a period when you may desire to improve relationships with brothers, sisters, neighbors. Now, Saturn and Mercury are invisible, as we said already, and Mercury is ruling your ascendant. Mercury together with Saturn and, of course, the sun in your fourth house can be a reason for some small issues at home. Can be a reason that you feel a bit down, that you receive uh, thoughts which are not very positive. But certainly when you know where this is coming from, 
the, the knowledge is power and you can certainly deal with this with knowledge that this is come from very from a temporary transit so feelings of depression of bad uh, emotions are very possible du during the saturn mercury uh, conjunction especially around the eclipse eclipses which are taking place um I would say with, with faith, with spiritual work, with um, high vibrations, a high level of consciousness, this period can be passed easily. And certainly with the help of Jupiter and Venus that are main king good aspect to the ascendant. And certainly with a lot of spiritual work and studies because the third house is very much about studies. The trade may be good, um, but not new initiatives, not new negotiations during this period. So, Libra to you, <laughs> Vanita. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, yes, uh, for Libra, this is your Lagna Lord, your Ascendant Lord, which is transiting the second house, joining Jupiter and expans uh, expansive planets. So, this, you know, your desire for growth and expansion. Now, this is what you want. That, is, that will give you more of material security. So, you are more into uh, now uh, your resources, your values, you will be more focused on that. You want to, you may notice an improvement in your financial situation also because uh, Jupiter and Venus are pious planets. They are the benefits, as you know, Krasi. So, you know, it is going to be a very uh, uh, transformational change, as in, like, you will start focusing on your family values so those values if you know they if you dig deep you will maybe you know grow because of those values so it is the time to get uh, go to your roots go to your values go to your family and you will find a solution there if you have any new skills that you are looking into i think this is the right time to uh, enhance your uh, skills also your educational skills because jupiter in the second house gives a lot of wisdom second house is the uh, is the house when you start uh, speaking you start that is the time so it is like an inception kind of a thing you know this is going to be a very transformational phase for you so it is good if you want to expand anything your finances you want to invest somewhere so this is going to help you a lot with uh, Mercury transiting the third house. Of course, it is uh, well synchronized because uh, it is from your Lagna Lord. It is the second house. So second house again is an expansive one. You know, it is like expansion of the wealth, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the finances, the financial situation. So it is definitely going to help you. But you have to be very wise because Mercury is logic. So if you are trying to invest somewhere, you have to be logical and of course in a very limited manner because Saturn confines, it, it, it's like, you know, it, it makes you feel that, no, you should not go there. You should not do this. It's a strict disciplinarian. So you have to be wise enough to make investments during this time. And of course, your communication should be uh, helpful. Uh, it, 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 it will help you, in fact, to, um, because third house is, as it is a house of communication, so with Saturn Mercury in the third house, your communication skills will help you expand your resources. So it is both uh, the houses are going to help you uh, grow uh, in uh, an overall manner. And of course, it's the uh, it, it's it's um, maybe with the property issues. If you have, you can just get them resolved during this time. So I think it's a good phase for you with this transit. This month especially is going to be very good for you. But please. It's a big no-no. Do not invest without thinking, being the eclipse on your head. So just be watchful. Over to you, Krasi. Yes. Um, Scorpio, with Venus and Jupiter on the Ascendant, it's very, it's a bless, blessful, really. It, this is the blessing of the two uh, most wonderful planets on your ascendant. So until even November 2019, when Jupiter, when Jupiter is still going to be in Scorpio, this is going to be a very good period with the small ex exceptions of the moments when Jupiter is invisible. But Jupiter and Venus on your ascendant, it's really to make use of this in anything, in uh, improving, well, you may have already this desire in having good relationship with your partner at home, with partners. You will feel fine. You will not know even why you feel better why you feel lucky so this is really very 
it's a wonderful period when you have Jupiter and Venus on the ascendant. You can't desire better than that. Well, of course, there is always something and it is happening on your second house with Saturn and Mercury invisible. So this will may, may mean that you may put some extra effort, logic, knowledge, structure, organization, knowledge, as we say, in the way you're making your incomes because there you will be a little bit restricted. So you, you, your incomes will be blessed by Venus on the ascendant, but still uh, additional work, additional knowledge and discipline and time ori orientation will be desired when you will be making money. Certainly, uh, I, I said already, but Venus will be supporting you enormously. So do your best. There is the hope. And um, this is a, basically a very good transit, which will uh, be about love, improving relationships with others, and a lot of knowledge and a lot of structure, if you like your business to go well. And negotiations and new initiatives wait until Mercury becomes visible. Um, and because this is the second house, yes, you may need to think of improving relationship with your, be very structured and very uh, persuasive if you want. And in, in the way you approach your family members, your family tree members, the ones that are important in your family, because there you may need to do some additional work as well. So, Vanita... Sagittarius, <laughs> the challenging sign. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, you were you were no, just no, no. talking about. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So yes, of course, Sagittarius is uh, people are really going going through a tough time because it's a Sarasati phase, as we call you know, uh, because Saturn transiting the Lagna, the first house, and uh, uh, Mercury, any planet which joins there, you know, it is like too much heavy duty uh, stuff on their own self. So it's it's a really um, uh, I would not say it's a bad phase, but yes, uh, because my Mercury is the Lord of your 7th and 10th, which is going to be in the first house with Saturn. So it is definitely going to impact your marital place. It is going to impact your work uh, place. You know, it is definitely a malefic it is joining. So all these areas you have to work on a lot during this these 20 days time. Till the 20th, I would say not even 20 days left. But yes, with Mercury, transiting the first house and uh, looking at its uh, own sign but uh, with Saturn so it is a little tough a scenario for you and uh, whatever you will you want to do it will be like restrictive you know you if you want to maybe you want to travel or you want to change a job this is not the right time you are having all those things you know maybe I will travel I will get promotion or, or I will just move from this place out from this place so all those things you have been thinking from a long 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 time but they are not culminating because this saturn is trying to uh, help you in fact i will not say that it is trying to control you but it is trying to help you not to take any wrong decisions saturn always whenever sarasati is on it comes to tell you that this is going to be a phase where you will learn if, if something and with Mercury joining there, so your logic mind would, would be overly uh, working. So it will be good for you if you just uh, think twice because Mercury and uh, is a dual, it's, it's, uh, it's like twice, you know, everything twice. So whatever you want to uh, decide, think twice, be logical and then take a decision. And of course, uh, 11th Lord is joining Jupiter in the uh, 12 it's venus is transiting your 12th house so it is like you know dealing you have to deal with your subconscious and spiritual realms so it is it is like obviously uh 11th lord going to the 12th you you know what happens so your ego will fade actually you you might feel a bit spaced out you might feel that there is a lot of problem that you're facing but you know you the fears and the resistance and all those will get uh, you you will discover your uh, in-depth qualities, I would say, with Jupiter and Venus in the 12th. It is a very beautiful phase when you will get a lot of, um, you will get closer to the spiritual world. So get connected, get uh, yourself healed. So with all this um, Mercury, Saturn there and uh, in the first house and from there, the 12th house is getting activated. So, you know, this is a nexus which is forming, which is showing that you should 
work on your ego more you should work on your fears more your subconscious self more so it is giving you an opportunity to come out of uh, the fears and the uh, uh, unconscious self of yours which is not the spiritual dimensions they they will get activated during this time and of course if you are having some really hidden desires um uh, uh, sexual desire especially so this is the right time where you can uh, you know that that can be spaced out as well so it is it is a it is a, a good transit for you i would say in a way because no transit is bad prasi i always feel that oh, course. Every, transit, every transit is here to teach us something so we must see what exactly the that planet particular planet is trying to teach us and in which house it is Yes, it's because this is Sagittarius, Vanita, just one word yeah. to complete. I also uh, know for sure that when there is a, a, a transit with Saturn, and this transit is not very easy, when the, Saturn, when the transit is over, Saturn always leaves some kind of reward. So yes, mm-hmm. people are going through a time which is a bit challenging, but later on, they are rewarded always by Saturn, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So what do you for Capricorn? Yeah, Capricorn. Again, we're going to Saturn and Mercury, of course, and the ruler of, uh, of your ascendant is in your 12th house, which is a sign that you will be very interested in hidden, esoteric knowledges, this for certain. This is also a sign that you need to give attention and to be very responsible for your own health and the health of your family members, especially while Saturn is invisible. But you will certainly be very much devoted into secret knowledges, sciences. Oh, you may desire isolation. You may find that this time is good for you to, to be in a temple or to stay alone, or to give time to your studies or to, to spiritual awareness or philosophies. You will be very blessed by the, by the harmonious aspect of Jupiter and, and um, venus so this is good even though you may have some lack of energy at times jupiter and venus will be supporting you'll be saving you from difficult situations um why am i saying that you need to give attention also to your health is because mercury is ruling your sixth house and your ninth house so give time to spiritual uh you will have this desire anyway but give time to spiritual studies to because certain uh, capricorn is a very intuitive sign because there are special stars there so give attention to uh develop even further you will have these chances to develop even further your intuition you will certainly have all these chances be careful with your subordinates colleagues be help, be careful what you're sharing uh, be careful f- how to perceive the information that is given to you, how truthful it is. So, Aquarius, Vanita. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Aquarius, yes, your um, uh, Ascendant Lord is transiting 11th house and it is going to join the 8th Lord, the 5th Lord and the 8th Lord, Mercury. So, yes, uh, rather I would say Mercury is joining the Lagna Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So because Saturn is already there from a long time. So you're already experiencing a lot. It is looking at your Lagna also because from the third aspect. So you must be feeling that you have whatever you are doing, you are unable to do it. Like you, it's about to finish, you know, you're, you've just reached the end and then you have to come back. You must have been feeling that. Uh, and of course, I have my clients also saying the same thing. So that is the personal experience I'm sharing. So yes, uh, of course, Saturn and Mercury, uh, you know, in the 11th house, whatever you want to do, I feel that the first thing you should do is that you should uh, not expect anything. If you want to want something to reach, uh, where, you know, the, 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 the goal that, that you have set. So you should not expect that timely achievement of the same. Because it is, as it is Jupiter, Venus, in the 10th uh, house, you are uh, thinking of growth, expansion, you know, from since October when Jupiter transited uh, your 10th house. You're already thinking about a lot of growth and uh, career and responsibilities and you want to improve your, uh, uh, you know, career prospects. And you want recognition course it's a house of recognition so when venus is joining there those uh, desires you know uh, it's the ninth law it's the fourth law so all those desires of fulfilling those dreams is coming even to more to limelight to accomplish them 
the status in the society. But you know, with uh, your Lagna Lord being in the uh, 11th and with Mercury joining there, you know, all this is giving you a, a hold back kind of a scenario. It's good if you do so because, you know, it is uh, as it is ex eclipse time and, you know, uh, sun is with Saturn right now also. So it is not a good phase that, um, uh, you know, you, if you're thinking of uh, uh, any major change in, uh, you know, maybe if you want to start a family or if you want to uh, get married also, this is not the right time. It's, you know, your self-confidence is not... Uh, it's coming in your way, in fact. You, you're thinking that, you know, it's, it's too high. It's too high. So you want that you, you might gain re, uh, rewards from earlier work and you want that they sh if you're not getting those kind of rewards, you are expecting a lot from your, your own self, which is not correct. So you just uh, have to lie low for at least uh, uh, till the eclipses are over. So you can just maybe from the next month onwards, things will start getting better. And uh, for you, especially when, uh, uh, but from March, of course, I'm reaching to March. Why? Because Ketu will be joining Saturn again. So it is going to be again the same scenario. So yes, we will be doing a, a separate video on the Feb and March. So we'll let you know from time to time. But yes, this is not the time to uh, accomplish, you know, the goal or expect a lot from your own self, I think. So this Lilo. Yes, temporary. Yeah. Only temporary. <laughs> right. Temporary, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Pisces. Well, Pisces are blessed because the ascendant ruler is together with Venus and is expecting the ascendant. So it's very spiritual time. And indeed, uh, from the ninth house, this is a, a good aspect. You may you may be reviewed uh, secrets of uh, of ancient knowledge or secret of, secrets of astrology or philosophical studies. Um, on your 10th house, a, a bit, you will be impacted by the invisible Mercury and Saturn. You may have some uh, challenges at work with, your, uh, with, with people which have a higher position than you at work. So this is a period where you should be really patient uh, do be structured, uh, be, don't negotiate, don't even negotiate for higher salary, for example, don't negotiate for another position, wait a bit until Mercury becomes visible and goes away with this uh, conjunction. This is happening not so far in the future. So uh, on the other hand, you will be very much saved from the trine aspect of Jupiter and Venus, which will be like taking care of you and which say your prayers will be heard by God's do spiritual work, do intuition work, support your intuition, uh, support your higher vibrational level, uh, but be careful at work a bit and be careful with the decisions you take. Um, so basically, these are the most uh, important things for Pisces, but you are blessed in general. You will be saved if you stay structured, if you stay uh, careful and a bit patient uh, with your bosses or with, in general at work. Yeah, I, I just want to add one thing when, you know, yeah. I've seen whenever uh, Jupiter, Venus are transiting the ninth house, especially, you know, uh, for uh, uh, Pisces, it is transiting the ninth house. So it is, it is kind of a liberator, you know, it, 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 you, you will, liberation plays a key here. So, you know, from uh, the state of, uh, you know, one state from being what you are to another, this is this is the time when you will start feeling the positive energy, I feel. Absolutely. And you will be reviewed some interesting knowledges and secrets and that you will be surprised. How is this coming from? Because, oh, this is happening from your ninth house. So you may have interesting development in terms of your vibrational level, other level of consciousness. I think it's a very interesting period for people who have um, Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Lagna, right? And of course, as Scorpio is a very deep sign, you know, any planet transiting through Scorpio is uh, definitely going Absolutely. to be a transformational phase. You know, whatever they will start, they will be just going, plunging deep into it, I feel. 
That's yes. what. And yeah. this is uh, partially just to be, because we're completing uh, to say that we spoke about the rising signs, but some of these can be very much applicable for your descendants, for your sun, for your moon place, uh, because these are the key places in the horoscope. So you may really consider these valid also for these key points on your natal true. chart, right? True, true, true. Thank you so much, Vanita, and I can't wait until we do the next interesting transits and how they will impact people. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, surely we will. Thank you. Thank you.